Kashtira is here and let's go over a deck list for it. After that, I will also show you some combos. So this is the deck that I played quite a bit. I also won a regional with it. But the big difference, of course, is that in Master Duel, we have a lot of painful hits. The most painful being we have only one pot of prosperity and one raid salt. Now, what does that mean? It means Kashtira is gonna be bricky. In the TCG, Kashtira was already considered a bit bricky, not having enough cards that start on their own. And now we have even less of them. So we had to kind of add a few weirder cards in order to make up for that. Some of those cards include Planet Pathfinder, which I hate to play, and Pot of Desires, which I do not like playing at three. Another option, however, was playing Pot of Extravagance. You could technically play three of all the important Kashtira extra deck monsters and then play this. Potentially over your second and third desires. It is an option, but I just do not have the extra deck cards. So for the list, we have triple Maxi because Maxi is broken. We have triple Ash because Maxi is broken. We have two Planet Pathfinder. I hate to do this. I hate it. Contribute this card, add one field spell from your deck to your hand. So you just normal summon it, get rid of it, get Raid Salt. Raid Salt gets you Unicorn, Special Unicorn, and then you do full combo. But again, I will show you the combos at the end. This feels bad, but really, I do not see any other way to reliably play. Then we have Triple Rice Heart. Again, not the greatest Kishtira monster in the deck, but at least in combination with either a Theosis or a Birth, it is still full combo. So that's why I'm still playing it. And we have two Shifter because Shifter is broken. Like, if Pearly goes first and you Shifter them, usually they will not be able to end on a Noir, as long as they don't have the little black cat out just yet. They might still make a beauty, they might still make a little bit of a board, but you should be able to break that relatively easily. Then we have two Fenrir because we're only allowed to play two Fenrir. Triple Unicorn. Thank God we still have that. This is like the best card in your deck to get started. One Ogre. I hate Kashira Ogre. I think this card is awful. But because we are lacking starters, again, the one Prosp and the one Raid Salt, I am still playing it. At least Ogre in combination with Teosis is still combo. At least it is another body. You could say, oh, it can search for the trap, but I never want to search the trap. Sometimes we may have to, but, you know, it's just not that great of a play. And we have one Scareclaw Kashira. This card can negate virtually anything in the game. It's absolutely crazy. Now we have Triple Pot of Desires. Again, I hate to do this, but the one really good thing, at least, is that when you banish off Pot of Desires after making your Arise Heart, your Arise Heart, your big booty daddy right here, can instantly start attaching some of those cards that were banished face down. So if you banish something like a Teosis face down and you attach it to your Arise Heart, you know that in your opponent's turn, you will be plussing of that. So while Desires, again, sometimes banishing 10 from your deck feels bad, First of all, we just have to. This deck does not have enough ways to play. And secondly, we can still plus of it. So it's not quite as bad as in other decks. And we have two triple tactics talents. I really like to play this card in this deck for two reasons. First of all, the two potentially best decks going forward are going to be Pearly and Kashtira. And tactics is great against both. Because whenever you start playing, Arise Heart will automatically activate its effect. Then you just talents and take it. And we have one Pot of Prosperity. I wish we had more. And we have triple Teosis because this is a great play extender. But you'll see that in the combos. We have one Raid. Salt. I wish we had more. We have Triple Birth. This is the craziest follow-up ever. And then Triple Book of Eclipse. Now, Book of Eclipse is a bit of a weird one. Uh, you don't really see that very often, but Kashtira and Pearly was the meta where Eclipse really went hard. So basically, a lot of Kashtira end boards are combinations of a Rice Heart and Shangri Ira, and also maybe like a Fenrir or so, and being just able to go Book of Eclipse, bloop, everything gone, feels really, really good. Also, if your opponent tries to make their Pearly Noir with Pearly Heap with a trap, you can just chain Eclipse and then book the monster and they don't get a Noir. So Book of Eclipse is just awesome for that meta specifically. It's a bit less good against Pearly right now because in Master Duel they can hard make the Noir, you know, with delicious memory and so forth. But this is like the closest you're gonna get. And also this is great to set. So if you go first and Pearly tries to break your board, usually they have the field spell, so you can't Book of Moon their cards, but you can Book of Eclipse their cards. So that's why Eclipse is really solid. And we have Triple Imperm. The reason is that if you go second to a Kashtira board, you usually just hold the Imperm, because usually they'll end on like one Arise Heart, maybe a Fenrir or something, and being able to just Imperm the Arise Heart usually gets rid of all the pressure. And then against Pearly, sometimes just getting rid of a Lily can really end the game already. And then we have one Big Bang. This is an awful brick. I hate this. In real life, I was constantly cutting this, but I'm afraid we need a little bit of that power still. This will also allow you to do the double Arise Heart combo, which I hope to show you very soon here. Then for the extra deck, you'll see it's a little messy because I'm still trying some things out, but I'll tell you what's required and what's not. So Baron, I think, is actually amazing, especially
especially if you also play something like Ghost Mourner. So like if you have even more level three hand traps, it's even better. But I figured even, even with Ash, it's still good. So the way that combo works is basically if you open Unicorn and one of the two spells with Ash, you can end on Baron Arise Heart. And then if you open anything else on top of that, like any of the extenders, you could end on like Baron Double Arise Heart or uh, Baron Arise Heart Shangri Ira Fenrir or stuff like that. So those crazy combos are definitely worth it in my opinion. And that's why I still want to add this to the deck. Then we have two Big Eye. Big Eye is basically the best card to break a Kashtira board with. But if they have a Unicorn on the board, they can start ripping from your extra deck. So if they notice like, oh damn, there's only one Big Eye, they take the Big Eye and you feel really bad. So that's why I'm playing two Big Eye. Yeah, we have Tomahawk, only available in Master Duel. I know some people were trying like Aurora Dawn combos before that. Personally for me, I just want a Tomahawk and then like turn one of the tokens into Link Spider, the two other tokens into win then turn all of that into Saryuja and then Saryuja draws me cards and hopefully gets me into Unicorn. <laughs> That's basically like my copium idea. I'm like if I open exactly Fenrir by itself then Fenrir by itself can still somehow get me to combo. So there's a little copium. I'm not sure if that's gonna be worth it. You might want to cut the Tomahawk, the Link Spider, the Win, and the Saryuja if you don't find that worth it. And again it's a little bit of UR material as well. But again I'm, I'm just desperate for playmakers. This deck is missing starters and I will try and get them. Then we have Dark Armed, the Dragon of Annihilation. This is just poppity pop stuff. This Infinite Track Mountain Smasher, this was a tech not many people caught onto, but this card is crazy. This card was winning me matches with Kashtira left and right. Basically what it says is when it destroys a monster by battle, you can attach that monster to this card. That means in, into Pearly, which usually has small monsters, so you can attack over it. You just attach it and now you have the two initial materials, the new material that you just destroyed and the Mountain Smasher that that's four, then you put a Zeus on top, and now you have a Zeus with two wipes. So this is basically the only way that Kashtira can reliably get a Zeus with two wipes, which is really, really big in certain matchups. Then we have two Shangri Ira. This is, of course, part of some of the bigger combos. And we have two A Rice Heart. This is the big daddy boss monster. One Zeus because it's hit. And then we have the Link Spider, like I said, for the Tomahawk stuff, the Wind for the Tomahawk stuff, and Seryuja for the Tomahawk stuff. Now, one card you may notice here is Infinitrack Goliath. Now, if you played Kashtira, in the TCG or OCG, you know that if you activated Prosperity, you banish cards from your extra deck phase down. Then after that, if your Arise Heart activates his effect to attach anything from the uh, banish, like once per chain, each time a card is banished, attach one banished card to this, to this card as material, you have this effect, and so you can attach cards that you banished with Prosperity. So one of the tricks people started doing is they started putting really good cards in their extra deck just to attach them to Arise Heart. So you your Arise Heart became like even better. You might put in like a Garura or an Entes or anything like that and that way give extra powers to your Arise Heart. I only put in one, this Goliath, because it says the card cannot be destroyed by card effects. So if you attach it to your Arise Heart after activating Prosperity, your Arise Heart cannot be destroyed by card effects, which feels really good. But the issue is we only have one Prosperity. So I didn't want to commit like three, four, five extra deck slots to like good Prosperity targets when realistically we only have one Prosperity it won't come up that often. Now, if you hate the Tomahawk package, you can just cut these cards and then put in even more of those Prosperity targets. Maybe you feel like you are so lucky that you will be able to Prosperity all the time and make the best Arise Heart on the planet. Then you can play the Garura, this baby right here. When they get rid of your Arise Heart, then you will simply draw a card. You can play Entes. When they get rid of your Arise Heart, you target a card on the field and destroy it. There is also Skull Knight right here. Then that will allow you to destroy a monster and there's also skull wagon right here which allows you to destroy a spell and trap so those are cards you can attach to a rice heart after using prosperity but again it's not gonna come up often enough so i just figured i played the one so that is the list right now again if you don't like some of these extra starters like pathfinder or desires you could try extravagance or maybe you found another way to make this deck less of a bricky mess but this is what i'm going for right now and let's go for combos right now okay so this is a crazy hand but we will only do the one card arise heart here. So I, again, with this hand, we can do far more, but I want you to know what you can do with one unicorn first, and then we'll do bigger combos. So I'm going to special summon unicorn. And I'm going to use Unicorn's effect to get Theosis. Get Theosis right here. Then Theosis is going to activate. And again, we're simply going to ignore all the other cards in our hand. They are not even here. We're going to special summon out a Fenrir. 
And we're going to activate the Fenrir, get ourselves a Rice Heart. Now we're going to do the one Rice Heart right now to play around Nibiru. There are even bigger combos you can do with one Unicorn. Be aware of that. But we are specifically going to try to play around Nibiru. So now our Rice Heart will just get rid of, let's say, Ogre right here. We banish three. And then we make ourselves an Rice Heart. So this combo is one unicorn equals one Arise Heart. And you can't get Nibiru because this was our fourth summon. And then ideally you do this when you already have a bunch of other non-ninja in your hand. Maybe you have like Book of Eclipse, Ash, Imperm, those kinds of cards. If you have an Arise Heart with a bunch of those kinds of cards, you're probably good. And then you destroy your opponent with the follow-up afterwards. So this is the one unicorn equals one Arise Heart. Let's try another combo. A painful hand, but we have Planet Pathfinder. So our little boy right here, our little cute hot wheels is at least going to allow us to play the game so this time let's just see what we can do with a raid salt and a theosis this is going to be a bit of a bigger combo but not quite as big as, as some of the other stuff we are able to do so we're going to add a unicorn again usually almost all your combos are going to be add unicorn then we're going to special summon unicorn and then we're going to activate Unicorn's effect to get ourselves a birth. Let us see. Let's activate Theosis, choosing Unicorn. And Theosis is going to get us Fenrir. All right. Then we're going to activate Fenrir, getting ourselves a Rice Heart. And then we're going to activate Rice Heart's effect, special summoning it out. And then we're going to make a Shangri Ira out of the Fenrir and the Unicorn. And so now here we have to make some choices. What are we trying to do? Are we trying to go for like a Shangri Ira with an Arise Heart and maybe even a Fenrir? Are we trying to go for a double Arise Heart play? How about we go for double Arise Heart after this? Let's try and do another combo this time. So we're going to go for Rice Heart and we're going to banish Big Bang. So we're going to do Big Bang and then nothing. We're going to activate Big Bang, choosing our Shangri Ira and then will also activate Shangri Ira right here, locking one of their zones. Usually you're going to choose a pendulum scale maybe, but kind of whatever. All right, so we're going to add the Fenrir to our hand and then special summon out the Fenrir. Okay, now this time we will actually activate Raid Salt's effect. Yeah, this is a fancy one. And we're going to try to destroy Shangri Ira. And then we will use the effect of Shangri Ira to detach the unicorn. Now, the reason we do this is because we want the unicorn engraved to get it back with birth. Now, next, we will go for an Arise Heart on top of Rice Heart, just like that. Just so we make our, our one Arise Heart, end of story. This will not have a banish right now, but as our opponent starts playing into the board, it will start getting material. And then we will activate our birth and get our unicorn back. So now this time we have a pretty cool board because we have a Shangri Ira, which will start zone locking as well. Can also maybe get us a second Fenrir if you are feeling feisty. We have a Fenrir, we have a Unicorn, we have an Arise Heart, we have a Birth, like we have a bunch of stuff here. Now you also noticed in this combo that there was a moment where we could have made two Arise Hearts. Now if you didn't see that, no problem. I will now show you the double Arise Heart combo. We'll be able to put up a double Arise Heart, which is the combo I will try to show you right now. So so we will activate the Raid Saw and we will add a Rice Heart to our hand. Next, we will special summon our Unicorn. And we already opened both spells because we're just good like that. So let's grab another Birth right here. So we have another Birth. Then we will activate Kashtira Theosis, which will target our Unicorn. And then we special summon something with a different attribute. So we're going to go for Fenrir this time. So we get our Fenrir out. Then we're going to activate the Fenrir. And this is going to get us our Scareclaw. Kashtira. This is very important. This is the most important part of the combo. So be sure to grab Scareclaw Kashtira. Basically, whenever you have access to Unicorn and either Rice Heart or Scareclaw Kashtira, you have the combo. Like your opening hand needs to have access to the two, meaning you get then all three. So right here we have uh, everything to do that. So we're going to activate its effect to special summon it right here. Now we are going to make a Shangri Ira out of these two. Okay, so we have Shangri Ira. Then we will activate Rice Heart and we will banish specifically Big Bang. So we're going to go for Big Bang and we banish three. And then these two cards are going to trigger. So we will activate Big Bang, choosing Shangri Ira. And then we will also activate Shangri Ira to lock one of their zones. All right. So then Big Bang specials out our Fenrir to the field. 
Yep. And so now, usually you could like raid salt, kill our Shangri Ira, and then Shangri Ira would protect itself to then get rid of our unicorn. But since we opened absolutely everything, that's not even necessary. So uh, let's not pop right here. Now, next, we're going to activate Scareclaw Kishtira. Special summoning out. Banishing the Teosis from our grave, which will activate the Teosis because it was banished. Adding the Big Bang to our hand. Yup. And then we can make a, a Rice Heart right here. And then we can use the three last bodies to make another Rice Heart. So just like that. And then we also still have the Big Bang, which is kind of like an evenly matched, but on both sides. So don't activate this when you have two monsters. Wait for them to get rid of one of your Arise Hearts, and then just bloop, Big Bang, get rid of everything in the game. So this is the combo. This is your end field if you just open Unicorn and Arise Heart or Unicorn and Scareclaw Kishtira. Now, we could have gone even further here because like I said, we could have used the Raid Salt to pop our own Shangri Ira, and then Shangri Ira would protect itself, detaching one of the materials Materials. And in that case, our Big Bang should have summoned Unicorn because then we could birth this, you know, use this birth to add back a Fenrir. And then this end board would have been a Rice Heart, a Rice Heart, Fenrir with a trap. And of course, then also we would set Imperm. But in general, this end board is already absolutely crazy and very few decks can play through this. Like if your opponent needs their graveyard, good luck getting through this. So that is the double a Rice Heart combo. So that's the deck. Again, I have played this deck a lot, so I do know quite a bit of the luck. Lines. There's definitely a lot more you can do with this deck. There's combos with just Unicorn, making Shangri Ira, and then making a Rice Heart on top of the Rice Heart, and then getting a Fenrir in the standby phase. However, I have to warn you about one important last thing. This is why you watch until the very end for the little magic tricks. A lot of people will be playing Kishtira. So if you activate a Shangri Ira in your opponent's turn, yeah, this will allow you to special summon something like a Fenrir, right? This says during each standby phase, special summon a Kishtira monster. So you might think, oh, cool, I get a free body, a free powerful monster like Fenrir, this is awesome. I will activate this. I'm telling you right now to not do that. The reason is Kashtira is going to be very popular now and you need to read Kashtira Arise Heart's effect. Once per turn, you can also exceed summon Kashtira Arise Heart by using one Kashtira monster you control if an effect of Kashtira Shangri Ira was successfully activated this turn. This includes your opponent's Shangri Ira. So anyone building a deck right now has to put Arise heart in their deck because if they use any Kashtira monsters and usually everyone plays Fenrir any Kashtira player that activates a Shangri Ira will now make it so your opponent can make a free Arise heart of themselves with a Fenrir this is absolutely busted so I on my tier limits deck even will be playing an Arise heart knowing that if my opposing Kashtira player activates Shangri Ira I'm getting a free Arise heart baby and that Arise heart is going to attack and and gonna make a free fucking Zeus and wipe their whole damn board. And if they don't want that to happen, they better start wasting their Arise Heart Banishes, which is huge. So again, if you don't need to activate Shangri Iros special summon, do not do it because you might get hard, hard punished. And this was a very important thing. When Kashiro was big in the TCG, you did not want to activate your own Shangri Ira in the standby phase of your opponent's turn because you knew very solid shot that you're going to get destroyed for doing that. But a lot of Master Duel players don't know that yet. They will have to find out the hard way, but now you know. So hope you found this interesting. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you soon. Ciao.